Hitler head south to harden his pact of softening steel. From the Brenner Pass, which links Germany and Italy through the Alps, his official train races to Rome for a high meeting of state. The Fuhrer controls all Europe. But after four years of war, his Axis partner, Italy, has sunk to the status of a satellite. shirted fascists. It is the brown-shirted Nazis who call the tomb. Allied soldiers to the continent of Europe. Sicily is the stepping stone. General Montgomery will command the British troops, General Patton the Americans. The greatest convoy yet organized, almost 3,000 ships and landing craft, from ports stretched all the way east to Suez, all the way west to Gibraltar, will deliver the punch on which hangs the fate of the Italian Empire. In July 1943, the convoy puts to sea under the scrutiny of His Majesty, King George VI. One hundred and sixty thousand Allied soldiers move toward Sicily. No enemy action challenges the passage of the ships, but another and more awful hazard intervenes. In the path of the smooth sailing convoy, a storm is making up. Unseasonable, unpredictable, threatening weather. It is too late to turn back. Land-loving troops sail into the tempest.
convoy and its men weather the storm. Sicily, ancient fortress, forgotten kingdom, rugged island separated by a mere two to 12 mile strip of water from the Italian mainland. But it takes six weeks of vigorous fighting before Sicily falls, and the last prisoners from the broken ranks of the Axis call it quits. lashes the Allied sailors, this time carrying Axis prisoners back to North Africa. Allied ships may found it, but of greater significance, fascism itself has found it. Italian fleet sails to its demise, sails to the island of Malta to surrender. The long, cruel naval battle for the Mediterranean is over. Tiny Malta, which has endured the worst of Axis lashings, ironically becomes the scene of Axis dissolution. It is September 1943. Italy signs an armistice. Mussolini has fallen. His successor, Field Marshal Badoglio, brings Italy over to the Allied side. But if the axis is broken, the dominant half remains intact. The Germans turn Italy into an occupied country. Mussolini and his fascists are now the slaves of Hitler and his Nazis. From France and from the Balkans, the Germans send fresh troops into their new province of Italy. Their high command is calculated correctly. The next Allied blow will fall in the Gulf of Salerno, 185 miles northeast of Sicily, on the Italian coast. The attack comes, and the Germans are waiting. exactly four years after the beginning of World War II. The United States Fifth Army and the British Tenth Corps hit the Italian mainland, knocked the first hole into the fortress of Europe. Salerno is only 40 miles south of Naples, the greatest port in southern Europe. That is what the Allies are after. But first, they must slug it out with the Germans. The Gulf of Salerno becomes the Gulf of Despair. becomes a duel of cannon, guns afloat against guns ashore. everything it has against the invaders, hoping to smash the landings and pin down the Allies south of Naples. The beachhead, the Italian campaign, hovers in the balance.
German propaganda blankets the world with the news that the invaders are being thrown into the sea. But the flow of Allied men and supplies continues in the face of a new, fearsome weapon used by the Germans for the first time, the remote control glider bomb. launch their crucial counterattack, delivered with all the skill and fury that have made Hitler's legions the terror of Europe. The Allies are almost split in two, almost driven off the beaches. Almost. <laughs>
greatest salvage feats in the annals of war is performed by Allied engineers in the Bay of Naples. Within a fortnight, the harbor is operating. Within a month, 50 hulks are raised and the port is cleared. Clear to receive the avalanche of supplies needed to sustain and broaden the Italian campaign. Naples is the reward for the ordeal of Salerno. stand entrenched, immovable, and the campaign becomes a bloody, futile stalemate. Checked on land, the Allies counter with a sweeping flank attack by sea. From Naples and Salerno, a convoy sails 120 miles up the coast to Anzio, only 30 miles south of Rome itself. The Americans call it an end run. The British call it a cat claw. 50,000 troops are put ashore behind the flabbergasted Germans. Second, 1944. The initial landings are unopposed, but Allied success is checked by Allied error. Instead of swift exploitation and immediate breakout, the invaders dig in, giving the Germans time to rally their defenses, time to isolate, imprison the beachhead in a perimeter of steel. The hell of Salerno pales before Anzio's inferno. bases at Foggia, Allied airmen fly to the rescue of their frantic comrades at sea and on land, sailors and soldiers whose blood holds Anzio. And from the Balkans, the Germans bring in more planes to slaughter the precarious invaders. <laughs> Decisive stroke to open the road to Rome. Anzio. In reality, 123 days of incessant carnage. A long drawn nightmare. <laughs> Three crack Nazi divisions have been destroyed. 
30,000 young men are lost to Hitler. In from the coast and up from the south, the Allied armies stream together, forming a swelling, flowing tide whose billows are lashed by victory. The march begins. The march to Rome. is the benediction of fascism, of dictatorship. In Italy, Hitler has been compelled to squander and disperse his forces, weakening his Russian front, sapping the strength needed to oppose impending Allied landings in France. The price paid by the Allies on the Italian front today will be refunded in France and Russia tomorrow. And Mussolini? He and his age pass into history. Free again. 